We've been in First uh, John for the past many weeks, uh, going verse by verse through First John, and and First uh, John, as you know, was written by the Apostle John, the Apostle of Love. Um, the Apostle John speaks more of the agape than anyone else. You know, he mentions uh, the love of God more than anyone. He was the apostle who was referred to as the one whom Jesus loved. He laid his head upon the chest of Christ at the Last Supper. And, uh, you know, he loved the Lord, and he loved the Lord's church because the, the church, the ecclesia, those that are called out from the world, uh, to become sons and daughters of, of the living God are uh, the bride of Christ. And so he, he loves the bride of Christ. And he wants to preserve and protect the, the bride from any, uh, anything that may uh, taint or harm. You know, think about that. You know, the... Uh, the love of God is so uh, deep and rich, and it, you know it's like Cara, Caroline testified. You know that she she came to a place where uh, she she recognized that God was you know much more than just uh, you know uh, someone that she was pursuing, but that He is someone bigger and greater, and that is pursuing her. And uh, yeah, so that that love relationship is. Is uh, is what heals us, Amen. We we were healed through Jesus Christ, and uh, that ultimate healing that is spoken of is the 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 salvation. You know, when I, Isaiah speaks of uh, you know the suffering prophet, you know, uh, the one who uh, you know bore our uh, bore our griefs and and our sin. Uh, and by whose stripes we are are healed, there there's a healing that happens at salvation and continues in our lives, and it's the the love of God that brings that to us and opens our eyes to be able to even see, you know, and experience what that you know love is is all about. And so John uh, wants to preserve and protect his bride, and so we saw. As we uh, walk through First John, that he said, the first thing that I want you to hold on to is uh, Jesus. I want you to know that our fellowship is with the Son and His Father, and so we we took a look at who the biblical and the historical Jesus. Is you know he he said we were eyewitnesses we beheld his glory we touched him we ate with him he was a real guy and there are many today that would say oh yeah well Jesus uh, you know uh, he, he we believe in in Christ consciousness or we believe that Jesus is a, was a spirit you know Jesus came he was flesh and blood he had to be flesh and blood in order to uh, present himself in obedience to his father's will and become obedient even to the death on, on a cross. He was a human being. He bled and was broken and died for us, you know. And so Gnosticism teaches that, um, you know, the spirit and the body are separate and uh, that uh, <clears throat> that Jesus was, uh, you know, not who the Bible says he is, that he was a, he was a, uh, he was a man. He was a man, but he was the God man because from the very beginning, even before he was born, you know, the prophet said, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. He said, he's going to be born of a virgin. And you know that today the virgin birth of Jesus Christ is under attack. And there are some mainline denominations that are actually having big uh, conferences about, well, you know, it, it, it doesn't really mean 
like, you know, uh, historical Christianity has believed that, the, that Mary was really a virgin, you know. Uh, she was a, a young damsel, but, you know, <laughs> they're trying to figure out, they're changing what the Word of God says. You know, in the Revelation, John also wrote the Revelation, you know. He says, hey, anybody messes with the Word of God and turns it around and shifts it and changes it, you know, uh, watch out. You know, these things are going to come upon him. God's Word is God's Word. It's uh, the Theosinos. <laughs> Theonostos. It's God breathed. Theonostos. You know, all Scripture is divinely inspired, right? And is profitable for doctrine and instruction, for correction in righteousness. So that we the man or the woman of God can be thoroughly equipped. And so look to the Word of God. Let's look to the Word of God today. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to wrap up what uh, we started last week, and that was in uh, 1 John chapter 5, um, beginning in verse 13. Um, I'm not going to... Uh, exegete all of that. I'm not going to take everything because we've already done that. But I do want to get to verses 20 and 21 of chapter 5. That's where we left off. So before we do, I just lift up a prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, that your word is manna to our spirit man. Lord, uh, you tell us in your word that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And so, Father, just uh, come and teach us, speak to us, and may we uh, have ears to hear, Lord, and, and spiritual eyes to see what it is that you are saying, Lord, that we can walk in that truth, applying that truth to our lives. For we ask it in the name of your Son and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. So First John chapter 5, and um, I'm going to pick up in verse 18. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin, but he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Verse 20, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true. And we are in Him who is true, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. So in last week's uh, sermon, we saw that there are... Uh, Four certainties that the believer in Yeshua has. Four certainties. You know, John wrote this epistle to uh, speak to the bride, the body of Christ, and, uh, you know, uh, impart that certainty, the assurance of who he is and who they are. You know, I think that's the most important thing, you know, is that we need to know. We ask, okay, who, who are we? Who are we? You know, who am I, Lord? And uh, we begin to ask that question. It's a wonderful question. It's a deep question. It's a question that, that God wants to answer, you know. But then we also need to ask, okay, who are you, God? You know, you look out into the universe and the stars and, 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 and infinity and you go, Wow. Uh, you, you know, your word says that you, you're the God who breathed these universes into existence. And um, that is a place where the finite mind stands in awe of God. How'd this all happen? How'd I, how'd I even get here? You know? And so uh, God wants us to know because these false teachers had come into the body of Christ, which is continuing on today. We have so many cults and so many things. All you need to do is go down to the local store and the bulletin board, and you'll find something new. 
you know. I, I was taking pictures of them for a while, the bulletin boards, because I, I find them interesting, you know. And uh, there's a couple new ones, you know, in town. And, and uh, I thought the most amazing one was, uh, yeah, come, you're going to receive a deeper level of a consciousness. And then in fine print at the bottom it says, we are, we have uh, found this uh, enlightenment through a, uh, through the ancient uh, shamans in, in, the, in Central, uh, uh, South America, uh, they take a, this poisonous frog, and then they take the poop from the frog, and they ingest it. And I'm going, wow, now that beats all, you know. That, that is like, I couldn't even make this stuff up, right? You know, truth is stranger than fiction. And, of course, it causes you to purge. It causes you to, you know, throw up. I mean... And, 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 and purge your body, and then you have hallucinations, and, and then you're, you're in there. You've had an experience with, with God, you know. But um, Paul, <laughs> Paul, he is a John. John is saying, these false teachers, these Gnostics who are, are spreading these lies, you see, they were itinerant false prophets. They were going into the the communities of faith, like like this community of faith, and they would come in and they would begin to teach things that were contrary to the Word of God. They say, oh, you know, that, that Jesus thing, well, he's not really, you know, he really wasn't a, a fully a man, and he really wasn't God, you know? Um, there pe- there's people that will tell you that. They'll tell you all kinds of things. It's important that you know who Jesus is. And, and, and so uh, John said... Um, you can have this certainty. You know, you remember last week we emphasized that, that uh, that first certainty was uh, in verse 13 of chapter 5. He says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Here we go, listen to this. That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. When false teaching comes in, confusion comes in into the body of Christ. And, and uh, John is trying to say, hey, uh, you know, you can know who God is and you can know who you are. You can know that you have eternal life. I've even had Christians tell me they're not sure if they have eternal life. Well, I, I want to submit to you that the Bible says you can be sure. You know, you can be sure. You can have this certainty. You know, the uh, second certainty, and so we're just going to run through these certainties. There's five of them. We, uh, I preached on the, these last week. The second certainty was found in, in verse 14 of, of chapter 5. Now, this is the confidence, or the certainty, this is the confidence. You know, confidence is something that comes from deep within. You know, you know I am confident in being here. Uh, because I know that God's word is true, and I know that he, he calls me to uh, proclaim his truth. And so I'm confident in this. And you as a believer can be confident in this too. But this is the confidence that we have, listen to this, in him. It's all in him. And we're going to move towards that point of being in him. Uh, in those last closing verses, 20 and 21. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, last week I spoke in depth about prayer, and, uh, you know, it talks about the prayer, the, uh, the sin, praying for the, the person in the body of Christ who is in obvious sin, but that sin is not lead, leading to a physical death. There's a sin leading to a physical death, and there's, a, there's sins not leading to physical death. So I'm not going to... Uh, you know, go back into that. But there is a place, and uh, I've seen that happen in people's lives where, where you know, the believer is uh, going in a direction, God corrects them, and they go uh, back again to that same thing, and then they go back again to that. And it, it's, a, it's a pattern. It's a pattern. It's a pattern. And, um, and then God says, okay, time's up. 
You know, we've all got a time, right? We've all got a time. And I pointed to the fact that the Lord's Supper, when it's taken uh, not with the, the right spirit, acknowledging who Jesus is, it take, taken lightly, you know, just taken ritualistically, that there were some in the New Testament church that died, that God took them out because of their uh, continued sin. And, but the... The point here is that we have a confidence, it says, that God hears our prayer. And I, I s spoke quite a bit about that. Do you believe and know that God hears you when you pray? How do you know that? Okay, praise the Lord. And you can also know it because God says it. It says in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12, which is a uh, quote from the Proverbs, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. You're righteous in Christ, right? Righteousness of Christ. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. And then I, I, I talked about how uh, the will of God, according to the will of God, according to the will of God. And we, we, saw, we looked at the example of Jesus Christ, who cried out and said, God, take it away from me. Please take this away from me. Please, please, please take this away from me. And he, he finally comes to the place where he says, Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And I, I, uh, I believe that that's a tremendous place of, of faith, of trust in God, even when you want it one way, you know. So that is the second confidence. What's the first confidence? That we can know that we are saved. The second confidence is that we can know that God hears our prayer. You know, the third confidence... Was or the uh, certainty, certainty is found in verse 18. We know, it says, that whoever is born of God does not sin. That means continue in a lifestyle of sin. Continue in a lifestyle of sin. But he, is, he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. We talked about how, yes, we keep ourselves unspotted from the world with the choices that we make, but God himself, it says in 1 Peter chapter 3, keeps us. God's Spirit is keeping you if you are a believer. And if you go off and make a decision that is uh, dishonoring to, to him or your relationship with him, he will call you back and there will be conviction. That's the one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit, right? He brings conviction, you know, and comfort, and he exalts the, the risen Savior. Uh, and so we have this confidence of, of uh, in verse 18, the certainty is the victory over sin and the enemy because we are kept by God. Okay? Now, if you, if you experience condemnation, we know from, what, Romans 8, verse 1, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, to those who walk according to the Spirit and not according to the flesh. Okay? We can know there's no con condemnation. It's when you feel that going, oh, you, you are no good. You are nothing. You'll never, you know. I mean, you, you feel it. It's a heavy, heavy, condemning thing. That's not God. God brings conviction and says, hey, you know, remember that part about uh, loving your neighbor? I, I really meant that. You know, was that loving the way that you uh, responded or reacted? And your Holy, the Holy Spirit in you will say, ah, oh, yeah, you know, I, I really felt that. I, was, I, I felt a little uh, conviction there. You know, you've got to know the difference. We've got to stand against the condemnation and say, hey, I'm in Christ. There's no condemnation. But there is conviction. God wants you to be walking straight up, straight with Him. You know? And so He brings that. And you can be confident. Hallelujah. You can be confident that Christ has won the victory over sin and over the world and over the devil. And He will give you the strength and the confidence to win the victory for Him and for you over your flesh. See, we still got this part that we're dealing with. And every day we get up and we're in this body. And, you know, this body is not always obedient to what God wants. And so we, we, 
we have someone greater, someone bigger, who if we invite and we say, Lord, come in and fill me up today because I know, I know I'm going to be tempted. I know I'm going to be challenged. I know I'm going to be, I, you know, we're in a war. We're, we're behind enemy lines, so to speak. And, uh, you know, God's going to make it all good. He is. And uh, he, he, he is today through his spirit in us. But one day he's going to come back and, you know, he's going he's to rule. He's going to rule with justice, righteousness, and loving kindness. And this is the ruler that we want. This is who we want. We can allow him to rule in our lives today. May his kingdom come as we allow him to rule and reign in our lives, personally sitting on the throne of our heart. Hallelujah. You know, that brings God glory. Okay, so, uh, and that's what it's all about, just to bring God the glory. Okay, so in verse uh, 4, we saw, we, <laughs> verse 19, we see the fourth Christian certainty. Okay? Verse 19, we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. So it says there again that we can, we can know that we are of God. It kind of dovetails into that we can know that we're saved. But we can know that we're a child of God. You know, everybody wants to say, hey, we're all children of God. You know, the whole universe is full of children of God. Well, in one sense, that's true. And in another sense, it's not. Okay, and, and, and this is what I mean. We're all children of Adam right? The first man. But God is the one who gave us life. God is the one who gave us a spirit. People say, oh, I'm spiritual. You know, everybody's spiritual. Everybody's got a spirit. But there's something that happens when you have an encounter with Jesus Christ that is real and personal because now you recognize truly who you are. You recognize who God is. God, you are awesome. You see everything. You know everything. You knew me even before I was born. I can't figure that one out. Lord, you are God Almighty, and I know who I am. I am Stephen Hedlund. I carry a, this body of flesh. I am not always kind and considerate, loving and truthful. You know, I am a sinner. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what saves me. Because I can say, okay, there's something greater. There's hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, so we reach out and we say, okay, God, let's go for it. Here I am. I know who I am. I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Please forgive me. And he does. He did. And he will. You know, God is almighty. He is awesome. He is perfect. He is holy. And he's calling each one of us into that personal love relationship where we're not looking at the glitter and the gold. We're not looking at this and that. We're just looking to God and saying, okay, God, whatever you want, whatever you want, your will be done in my life. But it's a, the fourth certainty that we have as believers is that we uh, are certain that we know that we are of God. If I ask you, have you been born again? I hope you can answer that question, yes or no. You know, and uh, like the, the testimonies of the young women here this morning, you know, praise God. Praise God for what he's done in your life and what he's doing and what he's going to do. You know, many are going to come to know the Lord through your witness. Hallelujah for that. You know, so we have these certainties. John is, is uh, strength, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> strengthening the body of Christ through these certainties. Okay, so here we go. I've got just enough time to bring it to our attention. Verse 20, the fifth Christian certainty, the last one that's uh, laid out in this passage, this uh, letter. And we know, again, we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true. I'll say that again. We are in Him who is true. In His Son, Jesus Christ. 
This is the true God and eternal life. Let me ask you this something this this morning. Are you in Christ? And that means is, is Christ in you? If not, today can be the day for that. You can invite the living God to come in. Come in. Only you can do that. I can't do that for you. Only you can do that. But when you do, you're going to know it. You know? And so, recognize who you are, a sinner in need of a Savior. Recognize who God is, the Almighty, who is the Savior of all. And uh, ask Him for forgiveness. Turn to Him. Repent of your sins. And invite Him in. So, this indeed is the... The, the last Christian certainty, the, the fifth Christian certainty. And this verse is a summation. If you want to uh, do some meditation this afternoon or later, meditate on this verse. It kind of wraps up the whole letter of First John. It's the greatest certainty of all. It's the incarnation. You know, there in, in verse 20 it says, We know that the Son of God has come. The Son of God, the historical, biblical Jesus Christ, the God-man who was born of the Virgin miraculously, lived a sinless life because he was God in a human body, and then went to the graveyard, that scariest place of all places, death, and he went there, and then he lived to tell about it. He was raised again from the dead. This is The real Jesus. Hallelujah. The incarnation. You know, the suffering servant and now the victorious Son of God who will come and rule and reign on this earth. He's coming back. You know, he's coming back for his bride. His bride, he's going to take us to where he is. Tells us that in uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, right? You know, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I will come again and take you to be where I am. All right. So that's important in your doctrinal uh, uh, understanding. You know, doctrine just means teaching, you know, your, your understanding of who uh, God is. He is, he is who he says he is. The fifth one, the fifth certainty, is uh, knowing that we are in him. Okay? Knowing that we are in his son, Jesus Christ. That all of this is possible in Christ alone. I don't know if, if, if you young people have had an opportunity to study the, the, or look at the five solas of the Bible. You know, um, it just means, uh, in Latin, it just means only, only. So the five solas are uh, uh, sola fide, uh, uh, only in faith, uh, sola gratia, uh, only through grace, uh, sola Christos, only through Christ, sola scriptura, only through scripture, and sola, sola de la Deo gloria, only for the glory of God. So those five foundational truths are really important. They're really important. It's not just, you know, stuff that you, you know, say that theologians should know about. It's only through faith, amen, that we can be saved. By grace, through faith you are saved. And that not of yourselves is a gift of God, lest any man should boast, right? Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Uh, and it's only through Christ, not, not Jesus plus something else. Let me just say that you can recognize false teachers because they will say, oh, yes, Jesus, and uh, yes, and you need to do this deep relaxation meditation. You need to eat this and, you know, be like this. It's not Jesus plus something else. It's Jesus. Jesus, Christ alone, and our identity in him, it says that... that uh, there in the, the last verses that we read, he says um, in verse 20 that he has come and he's given us understanding that we may know him who is true 
And we are in him who is true and in his son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Let me just say that being in Christ is who you are. That's your identity. And you should know who you are in Christ. You know, all of the wonderful passages in the Word of God that talk about us being in Christ. I'll just uh, quote one of them now. Uh, Colossians 2, 8 and 9 says this. For in Him, Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you, as a believer, and you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. So being in Christ is being in that place of certainty, of confidence, and resting in the power of God. Hallelujah. You know, um, Eddie gave me this poster from his uh, Sunday school class, and, and I'll just read it. It talks about being in Christ. This is Watchman Nee. Watchman Nee is someone that you would like to uh, read. He was a, a, a follower of Jesus, uh, you know, uh, in uh, China when, uh, you know, the, the cultural revolution broke out. And, uh, you know, that the history books say that 20 million Chinese were killed in the cultural revolution, which spanned about 10 years. You know, the great leap forward, and still today in China they refer to uh, Mao Zedong is the, the great leader, you know, and, and uh, he was just a, a deceiver. He was a, he was a, a false teacher, and uh, he extinguished uh, religion, you know, any expressions of that, even, you know, in the forms of uh, Co Confucianism and, and uh, you know, all, all of the other things. He just said no more, you know. Uh, but really it was about, they actually say that 40 million Chinese died in those 10 years. 40 million people. You know, when people follow in ideology like communism or, uh, you know, uh, I believe that Islam is an ideology. It's an ideology. It, it brings in government with, with what you believe and, and uh, you know, uh, it just brings death and destruction in its, its wake. And uh, that's not the way of, uh, of, of the Lord. Um, Watchman Nee uh, was arrested as a teacher and a preacher and uh, spent his last years in concentration camp and, and died there for his faith. But he wrote, outside of Christ, I am weak. Anybody say amen to that? In Christ, I am strong. Hallelujah. Outside of Christ, I cannot. In Christ, I am more than able. And you can back this up with so much scripture. Outside of Christ, I have been defeated. In Christ, I am already victorious. How meaningful are the words, in Christ. This is someone who died in Christ. He died for Christ. So, that's kind of our closing thought, but uh, there was one more verse. And I have to read it, okay? Because it's written there, and it's written there for a reason. That last verse there of 1 John 5, verse 21 says, Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Now, I think it's important for us to realize this. That John is con contrasting the term idols with the true God. He says, we know that we have true God through Jesus Christ. Right? This is the true God and eternal life. And then he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. So he's contrasting the true God with idolatry. He's referring to the false teachers, the Gnostic teachers that were rising up in the body uh, that had withdrawn from the, the congregation and now were off on their own, doing their own thing, and they were gathering people to themselves, you know? And, and so he was, he was uh, speaking of them and referring to their false beliefs and practices. Keep yourselves from these false teachers and their practices. This is idolatry. Because you know what? 
Anything outside of Christ is just man's effort to reach God. And most of these teachers and preachers, and believe me, I've, I bowed down to a false teacher. He wasn't a Christian, you know, but uh, Swami Satchidananda, and he had so much that was beautiful about him, but he was an angel in disguise. You know, the Bible says that Satan can disguise himself as an angel. And these angels will ultimately lift themselves up in pride. Say, look at me. Look, follow me. Not, not follow Jesus. Not look to the word, but follow me. You know, that's... John is saying, watch out. Watch out for these snakes. Protect yourselves. These guys upheld their worldly philosophy as superior to God's revelation. This was demonstrated in their own personal lifestyle. Basically, they said, you know, the spirit is good and pure and wonderful, uh, but the body, you can just do whatever you want. And it doesn't make any difference as far as your, your future. Um, in closing, John emphasized three things for us to follow or to see uh, as believers in Jesus. The first is that we walk in fellowship with the true Jesus. The true Jesus. There's a lot of imposters out there. The second one is let that love relationship that you have experienced through the forgiveness of your sins, let that love be manifest in your life so that others can see that. And uh, you're going to manifest that love by obeying what God tells you to do. It's going to line up with the Word of God. Okay, so faith, love, and obedience. Foundations of the faith. In closing, John highlights the importance of adherence to the fundamentals of the faith. It's not complicated. The Bible is not complicated. You know, be careful about people who say that they have a deeper knowledge. God's given you the Holy Spirit to teach you. You really don't have any need for someone. Teachers are great, but uh, they help us. But uh, ultimately, um, stick close to the Word of God. Stay in that place. You know, under the covering, like this tree. I love it. You know, we're under the covering. Stay close under the covering of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We thank you that um, you've blessed us this morning with a rain-free time together, Lord. Thank you so much for that, hearing our prayers. And thank you, God, for speaking to us. I pray, Father, that your word would uh, settle in our hearts and that we would find those confidences those certainties to be true and real in our lives. That we could walk forward in faith, expressing love through obedience. For we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Okay, I went over, but you guys were late, a lot of you, so no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I... would uh, I was, I was, we were going to sing a song, but there's no band here, and uh, I'm feeling kind of croaky. I, I don't think we're going to do it. But uh, I want you to sing this song today sometime, okay? And uh, if you don't have the lyrics, I can direct you to them, but it's, uh, you know, <laughs> In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my strength, my hope, you know, and, and uh, like that. In Christ. Let me just read this, this stanzas to you. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving cease, 
my comforter, my all in all. Here in the love of Christ, I stand. You know, um, it's the title of that is In Christ Alone. You can Google that. You can listen to it today or uh, just let that be your meditation. Yeah, it's such a powerful, powerful. Yeah. Okay, um, I'll pronounce the benediction if you want to stand, if you're able to stand. And then um, we'll have a couple of announcements. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you all. Aloha.